Hello, welcome to Class Time, your daily classroom for CSEC students. You can watch this lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. Send in your questions to Television Jamaica's Facebook page at Television, Television Jamaica or Instagram at Television underscore Jamaica or use the hashtag TVJ Class Time. Today in CSEC English, we'll be looking at summary writing. I am Nicola Bailey Blackstock. All right, today we'll be looking at summary writing and the last time we started to look at what is main idea and what is the topic and differentiating between the topic and the main idea. Now, we are going to do, do a little bit of a refresher, right? So we need to find out what is summary, right? Do we understand what it consists, what summary writing cons consists of, right? Do we understand what the main idea is? Now, before we get into the lesson, we are going to look at the lesson objectives for today's lesson. All right, so we have several objectives that we should cover for today. Now, they are, students should be able to identify main ideas in paragraphs, state why main ideas are combined, define transition words, explain why transition words are used when combining main ideas, combine main ideas using transition words, explain the importance of deleting examples from summaries, discuss the reasons for deleting examples from summaries, Develop competencies in writing by summarizing information, deleting examples. State the definition of statistical data. Explain the importance of deleting statistical data. Develop competencies in writing by summarizing information, deleting statistical data. Explain the importance of omitting repetition from summaries. Identify repetitive information in given text and develop competencies in writing by summarizing information, omitting repetition. All right, so the last lesson that we looked at, we got the definition of a summary, right? Do you remember what summary writing is, All right? So let us refresh our memories. Here it says a summary is a condensed or shortened version of an extended piece of writing, talk, or speech. It conveys the essential meaning of an original text written or spoken, right? So we need to remember that the summary is a condensed or shortened version of a piece of writing. And we need to also remember that we don't just summarize written work, right? We, if we summarize um, talk and text as well. All right, refreshing our memories here. What is main idea? Do you remember what main idea is? Right, now main idea is, main idea, the main idea of a paragraph is the primary point or concept that the author wants to communicate to the readers about the topic. Hence, in a paragraph, when the main idea is stated directly, it is expressed in what is called the topic sentence. Now, last session, we looked at the fact that the topic sentence and the main idea go hand in hand. They are one and the same, right? So the topic sentence and the main idea, they are one and the same. Right Now, what we need to remember is that when we are trying to determine what the main idea is, we can ask our, ourselves a question or two, two questions. What is the information about or who is it talking about? All right. So the main idea, when we want to find out the main idea, we ask these questions. What is the, the information about or who is the information about? All right, now last week we started off, we looked at, um, not last week, the session before, we started to look at tips in helping us to identify or to find the main idea. Now, finding the main idea is a key to understanding what you read. 
The main idea is to tie all the sentences in the paragraph or article together. Once you identify the main idea, everything else in the reading should click into place. The rest of the reading is the evidence provided to support that main idea. All right. So when we are attempting to find the main idea, right, first, remember, we need to understand the information first. And I said it the last time, if you do not understand the information, you will not be able to find the main idea or to further down the road, summarize the information, right? So we first need to understand what the extract or the, the text is um, talking about. All right. Now, in the last session, we started to look at identifying the main ideas. So let us go over that, right? Because we want it to we want to cement it in your in your minds, right? How we go about trying to find the main idea in text. All right. So here it says the instructions, and remember, read your instructions carefully. Read each passage and ask yourself. What is, the author, what is the author doing, sorry, in this paragraph? Write your answer in the summary box and then think of an appropriate title for the passage based on the main idea of the passage. All right, the passage. Being a clown isn't all fun and games. Rodeo clowns expose themselves to great danger every time they perform. When cowboys dismount or bulls buck them off, Rodeo clowns jump in front of the bulls and motion wildly to get their attention. In this way, rodeo clowns provide an alternate target and in doing so, protect the rider. Of course, this is a very dangerous thing to do. So you see, sometimes clowning around can be serious business. Now, one of the things that we need to consider is that when we read the information, we don't just read it once, we read it more than once to see how we understand the information, all right? So it would be good for you to read it again, right? To try to determine that you understand before you attempt to find the main idea. Now, the instruction continues, right? So it asks, summarize this passage in, in this paragraph in one sentence. Be specific and clearly explain the main idea, right? Now, after you have done that, you are asked to give an appropriate title. All right, now let us see if we can determine what the main idea of the paragraph is. Now, based on my understanding of the paragraph, I was able to determine the main idea, right? And the main idea is rodeo clowns protect cowboys by putting themselves in danger. Now, remember that the main idea should be expressed in a complete sentence. Please remember, express the main idea in a complete sentence. And the appropriate title is rodeo clowns. Now, remember the last session we looked at the difference between main idea and the topic. Now we realize that the main idea is expressed in a complete sentence and the title is expressed in a phrase. So the main idea should be a complete sentence while the title can either be one word or a phrase. A little bit more practice. <clears throat> Second one, so we are looking for the main idea. We're trying to identify the main idea. Now let us read this paragraph together. What's that humming sound? Could it be the hummingbird, the only bird capable of backward flight? Hummingbirds have many unique flight habits that distinguish them from other birds. Most birds flap their wings up and down to fly, but the hummingbird moves its wings forward and backward very rapidly in a figure eight pattern. This allows the hummingbird to hover in position. They can also fly upside down and move about very rapidly. Other birds have to push off with their feet to begin flying and work their ways up to their, to their top speeds. 
The hummingbird can both start flying at maximum speed and stop flying instantaneously. Once you've seen a hummingbird in flight, it's unlikely that you'll mistake them for another bird. All right, so tip, remember, try to understand what it is that you have read. If in doubt, read again or read a third time, as many times as you feel that you need to be able to understand what the paragraph is saying. All right, so same thing, right? Summarize this paragraph in one sentence, be specific and clearly explain the main idea. And we should give the paragraph an appropriate title. All right, the main idea of this paragraph the hummingbird flies in a unique and unusual way. Appropriate title, the hummingbird. All right. So we were able to determine what the main idea is and the title. All right. Now, we want to ask, ask ourselves, after we find the main idea of a paragraph, what do we do with it? Right. Do we just leave them there? what right now the other step involved in summary writing is combining the main ideas so we have found the main ideas and we need to put them together but we don't just put them together like that right there is a particular technique that we use to combine the main idea so here the question asks why are main ideas combined and we are going to find out all right Main ideas are combined to allow ideas to be more coherent. Now, coherent, what does that mean? Coherent there means that the main ideas or the ideas or the sentences flow seamlessly one into each other, right? And the main ideas that you have put together, they make sense, right? So you don't just smash them together, right? They must be coherent. They must flow into each other seamlessly into each other and they must make sense. All right. How do we go about combining main ideas, right? As I said, do we just, as I asked, do we just smash them together? No, right? There is a particular technique that we may use to combine the main ideas, right? And we combine main ideas by using transition words and phrases, all right? Now, we are then going to ask ourselves, what are transition words or phrases? What, how do these transition words and phrases help my main ideas to be more coherent? That is what we're going to learn. Now, transition words and phrases are vital devices for essays or other literary compositions. They provide the connections and transitions between sentences and paragraphs. They give your summary a sense of being a whole, not just a group of unconnected sentences. You see what I just said? Instead of us just smashing our main ideas together, right? The transition words help the sentences or the main ideas to flow seamlessly into each other, all right? So transition words are useful in allowing or main ideas or, or the information to be more coherent. Now, these transition words are free or phrases are very common. Quite a number of them are common and we, we use them and many often um, we do not realize that they are called transition words or phrases, all right? And some of these transition words or phrases, right, they are Um, one point that I want to, to, to note before we even look at the various transition words, we have to consider that transition words or phrases are not just randomly used in our writing, right? Transition words are, or phrases, they have different meanings, so they are used for different purposes, right? So we don't just put a transition word in our, our paragraphs and say, okay, then it's fine. No, they are used for different purposes and they have different meanings. All right, so examples of transition words, 
right? And these transition words show agreement, addition, or similarity. The transition words like also, in addition, and likewise add information. They reinforce ideas and express agreement with preceding material. Now let us look at these transition words that we have here, the examples, and this is just, um, these are just a few of the transition words that show agreement, addition, um, and similarity. In the first place, not only, but also, as a matter of fact, in addition, coupled with, and furthermore. Transition words and phrases that show opposition, limitation, or contradiction. These transition words and phrases express that there is evidence to the contrary or point out alternatives and thus introduce a change in the line of reasoning. And a few examples, in contrast, have you ever heard of that one? Different from, and I'm sure we've heard of this one. On the other hand, on the contrary, at the same time, in spite of. Transition words and, or, and phrases, sorry, that cause, that show cause, condition, and purpose. These transition phrases present specific conditions or intentions. And a few examples in the event that, so long as, in the hope that, in order to, in case, provided that. Transition words and phrases that um, show examples, show support, show emphasis. These transition words are used to introduce examples as support, to indicate importance or as an illustration so that an idea is cued to the reader. And a few of these examples are, in other words, to put it differently, in this case, and by all means. Transition words and phrases that show effect, consequent, consequence, sorry, or result. Some of these transition words are time words that are used to show that a particular time, that, that after a particular time, there was a consequence or an effect. And a few of these examples are as a result, thus, then, hence, consequently, therefore, and accordingly. And the final one, um, transition words and phrases that show conclusion, summary, or restatement. These transition words and phrases conclude, summarize, and or restate ideas, or indicate a final general statement. And these are, some of these are in fact, in summary, in conclusion, in short, to sum up. Now, we want to understand that we, for everything, there, there's a purpose, right? So we, want, we know how to identify the main ideas, right? And now we're going to be learning how to combine the main ideas after we find them, right? And the trick or a tip in helping us to combine these main ideas is the use of transition words and phrases. All right, so we are going to look at a little, um, a little example to help us to determine how it is that we go about finding the main idea and combining them. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more CSEC English.
welcome back to class time. Now, we, before the break, we were going to try to see how well we are able to identify the main ideas and then combine them. All right, so let us read. Tobacco is the leading avoidable cause of cancer and has been estimated to account for 30% of cancer deaths in the United States. Smoking increases the risk of many types of cancer, including cancers of the lung, throat, mouth, pancreas, kidney, bladder, cervix, and others. Smoking is also cause causally associated with many other diseases besides cancer, including coronary heart disease, stroke, emphysema, and bronchitis, as well as adverse outcomes of pregnancy. Well over 400,000 pre 400, premature deaths in the United States each year are attributed, attributable to cigarette smoking. Smoking can also affect the health of non-smokers. The same cancer-causing chemicals found in inhaled tobacco smoke have been found in secondhand tobacco smoke, but in lower concentrations. Non-smokers exposed to secondhand smoke are at risk for lung cancer and coronary heart disease, and children exposed to the pack to the to tobacco smoke have elevated risks of sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, ear infections, and respiratory infections. Most health problems related to cigarette smoking, including cancer and cardiovascular respiratory disease, can be reduced by stopping smoking. Quitting smoking is beneficial at all ages, and the earlier in life one quits, the greater the benefits. People who quit smoking cut their risk of lung cancer by 30% or to 50% after 10 years compared to continuing smokers and cut their risk of oral and esophageal cancer in half within five years after quitting. All right, now before we get to combining the main ideas or the combined main ideas, right? What we're going to be looking at is the highlighted portions of each paragraph. Now remember, we need to understand what the paragraph or the extract is saying first before we're able to determine what the main ideas are, right? Now the first main idea that we have found is tobacco is the leading avoidable cause of cancer. The second paragraph, smoking is also causally associated with many other diseases. Smoking can also affect the health of non-smokers. Most health problems related to cigarette smoking including cancer and cardiovascular respiratory disease can be reduced by stopping smoking. Now, when we have found our main ideas, as I said before, we don't just smash them together, right? We need to allow for our ideas, our main ideas to be coherent, to flow into each other, right? Because we want, though we have identified the main ideas and we want to put them together, they must make sense, all right? So let us look at how we went about combining these main ideas. Now, after all of those main ideas that we found, this is the result of us combining the main ideas. Smoking increases the risks of various forms of cancer. It is also linked to cardiovascular disease, lung disease, and pregnancy problems. Non-smokers exposed to secondhand smoking are also susceptible to lung cancer and heart disease. In addition, children are likely victims of sudden infant death syndrome and infections. People who stop smoking, especially at an early age, reduce the risks of various health problems. Now, when we look at our combined main ideas, don't they make sense, right? Don't we realize that the sentences flow seamlessly one arm into each other? 
That's the idea. That is what we want. We want when we read the summarized version or our combined main ideas, they make sense. We understand what it is that, we, that is being said. Now, when we look at the combined main idea, when we are able to put the combined main ideas and the original extracts together, together, we will see that the combined main ideas um, they are the same, they express the same idea as the original extract, and that is what we want. Now, remember I said to you that if you don't understand what you read in the original extract, you're going to have a problem because we need to first understand what is being, what is, what is being expressed in order for us to be able to summarize it, right? Or to even find the main ideas, right? So, we looked at um, combining the main ideas and some tips or a tip that we can use to combine the main idea. Now, one tip that we identified um, is transition words and phrases. Now, can you pinpoint a transition word or phrase that was used in the combined main idea? Look at it and see if you can identify the transition word or phrase that helped or aided in or combine main ideas to be coherent, right? One second or two just to find, to see if you can find the transition word or phrase. All right, so if you said that the transition word or phrase that was used is in addition, you are correct, right? In addition. Now, what did this do to the combined main ideas that you have here, right? It helped to or aided the combined main ideas to flow seamlessly one into the other. All right. Read the extract closely, select the main ideas in each paragraph, and combine them to form a coherent unit. So we're going to be doing one on our own, right? Just to test if you have learned what we looked at before. Now remember, read your instructions carefully. All right, so if you picked it up, the topic is cigarette smoking. If you see, if you realize that the first extract was looking at cigarette smoking and this one is looking at it as well. All right, now cigarette smoking has been a worldwide problem for centuries. Although medical research has proved that smoking is dangerous to one's health, a fair percentage of the population see no hope of kicking the habit. Many people who smoke cigarettes experience feelings of guilt. The feelings of guilt most likely develop partly because smoking had been repressed in their childhood by protesting adults. In some cases, due to their own belief that cigarettes are coffin nails, they desist from cultivating the habit. The fear of the deadly cancer has also served as a deterrent for some people. Investigation has shown that many people continue to smoke though they have guilty feelings about the habit. Why then do they smoke? They smoke in order to relieve tension at work, to satisfy their own desires to, social, to socialize, to achieve poise and confidence, to protect themselves against stress, and to conform to a particular group or class. Now remember, I can't say this enough, reread anything that you have in front of you, whether it is for exam purposes, for homework, whatever it is. Read it more than once so that you understand what you have read. All right, now we are going to try to determine what the main ideas are for this extract. Now, remember, if you don't understand it, you won't be able to identify the main ideas. So let us try to determine what the main ideas are, right? And how we went about combining the main ideas. All right, now another important tip, right? And we emphasized this the last session that we had we had as it relates to summary writing. Remember to try to put the information or the main ideas in your own words. That is what we are looking for, to put it in your own words. When we see that you're putting it in your own words, we know that you understand what it is that you have read. All right, so we have three main ideas here because there were three paragraphs. 
All right, so number one, cigarette smoking has been a worldwide problem for centuries. Two, many cigarette smokers tend to experience feelings of guilt. Three, despite guilt, people smoke for various personal reasons. All right, were these the same main ideas that you found? If you did, very good, you're on the right track. If you didn't, just go back, reread the extract, and see if you can determine what the main ideas are. All right, now let us look at how we went about combining the main ideas. All right, so we have the, the combined main ideas here. The smoking of cigarettes has been a problem around the world for centuries. Many cigarette smokers tend to experience feelings of guilt. Despite guilt, people have various reasons as to why they smoke. Now, does this express the same idea as the original piece of information? Yes, it does, right? And this is what we want. When we combine the main ideas or when we summarize anything, it should, the summary version or the summarized version should express the same idea as the original. All right, so moving on. Now, deleting examples. This is another step involved in summary writing. Now, have you ever read an extract and you realize that they're giving a whole heap of examples just to emphasize their points? All right, that is in the original extract. We don't want that in our summary because most, more, most often than not, the summary has a word limit. And for CSEC purposes, or for CSEC purpose, you are given a word limit when you are writing your summaries. So there would be no need for including examples in your summaries. All right. Now, writers use examples to support their main points or ideas, as I said, just to emphasize on the point that they had or they have. Expl expl explanatory or illustrative material can usually be omitted in a summary without changing the emphasis of the original information. All right, so what are they saying here? That you don't need to include the examples, right, to bring the point across, right? The aim is to make the information shorter. So to make the information shorter, we can just eliminate or delete the examples. All right, now practice. Practice makes perfect, right? So we're going to be looking at, an, at a paragraph or an extract, sorry, that has examples. And we're going to look at how it is that we were able to condense the information or summarize the information without the, the examples being present. All right. Read the paragraph, then read the summary. Note that the examples are omitted in the summary. All right. And the paragraph um, here, the people are part of the attraction of Trinidad, the most cosmopolitan island in the Caribbean. Is that true? The island's polyglot population includes Syrians, Chinese, Americans, Europeans, East Indians, Parsis, Venezuelans, and the last of the original Amerindian settlers of the island. You'll also find Javanese, Lebanese, African descendants, and Creole mixes. The main religions are Christianity, Hinduism, and Islam. In all, there are about 1.3 million inhabitants whose language is English, although you may also hear the local dialect. Now, reading this, I had to take several breaths, right? Because there were so many examples, right? Now, when we are going to be writing our summaries, right? We don't need all of these examples because, as I said before, the examples are used for emphasis, right? The writers use the examples for emphasis. So when we are writing our summaries, we do not need to include all these examples or we don't need to include the examples at all. All right, so let's look at the summary version or the summarized version. Trinidad is the most cosmopolitan island in the Caribbean. The population consists of people from various ethnic groups that practice different religions, but speak a common language as well as various dialects. All right, now let us look at it. Does it express the same idea as the original, right? 
does it do you understand it a little bit better without all those examples right or look at it and see if as i said if it expresses the same idea as the original right so it is not necessary to include the examples all right and this is why we always emphasize that you do not need to include the examples when you're writing your summaries all right so we're moving on deleting statistical data this is another step in summary writing right when we are writing our summaries we don't need to include all of this information right we don't need to get to the point so that persons are able to understand it better right so we don't need to include all that statistical data right now when writing summaries it is necessary to delete statistical data as i said before statistical data makes summaries cumbersome so it is best not to include them all right and the statistical data um they are usually used as emphasis as well so we don't really need to use them or include them in our summaries all right doing something to work on our own now right and looking at how it is that they statistical data is omitted all right read closely the following example note the omission of statistical data in the summary in a survey which aimed at determining the factors responsible for poor academic performance among students 500 students responded based on their responses three factors were identified school home and public transportation 60% of the students reported that boredom at school and teacher absenteeism were the two factors responsible for poor academic performance. In the home category, 52% of the students indicated that too many errands at home were a major factor. 15% admitted that they watched too much television. 6% attributed poor academic performance to poor diet and 3% stated inadequate resources such as books and uniforms. In the category of public transportation, 40% of the students claimed that the unreliable bus service resulted in, un in unpunctuality and this contributed to their poor academic performance. All right, so we're going to be looking at how it is that we went about deleting or omitting the statistical information all right 500 students responded to an investigation of the factors that contribute to underachievement in schools students attributed poor academic performance to three factors school home and public transportation the school factors were rated as most responsible for poor academic performance the second highest factor was the home and the public transportation ranked lowest. All right, let us look at this and the original um, information. Is the summary expressing the same idea as the original? Yes, it does, right? So when we deleted or omitted the statistical data, right, the, it was shorter easier to understand and it express it still expressed the same idea as the original right because the statistical data as with the examples were used in the original um, extract for emphasis right so we don't need to include them in our summaries all right moving on so where if you look at the pattern we are omitting right we're taking out we're deleting right so this is what we're moving to all right now we are going to be looking at omitting repetitions, all right? Now, before we do that, we are going to take a break. More summary writing when we come back.
Hello, welcome back to our lesson today in CSEC English. Now, before we went for our break, we, I informed you that if you noticed that, or I asked if you noticed that there was a pattern, right? So the last part of this lesson, we are looking at omitting or deleting, right? Or in simpler terms, taking out, right? So we looked at deleting examples, deleting statistical data, and now we're looking at omitting repetitions. All right. So the aim of summarizing is to condense information so that it is easier to understand, right? That is our ultimate goal, right? To allow the information to be easily understood, right? Because remember, when you have the full extract, it can be a bit overwhelming, right? And a little bit difficult to understand, right? So when we summarize the information, it um, allows us to understand the, what is being expressed um, a little bit better. All right, so again, the aim of summarizing is to condense information so that it is easier to understand. Though repetition is used to achieve a writer's purpose, in summarizing the content of the passage, it will be necessary to delete all examples of repetition, right? So again, we are taking out, we are removing, or we are deleting, right? So remember, when you are doing your CSEC exams, for the most part, for paper two, right, summer writing is section A, right? The first activity that you will see is summer writing, section A on your paper two. Now, when you see, when you open the booklet and you look at section A, summer writing is there, right? Now, these are everything that you know, that you need to know in order to maximize your chances of getting full marks in this section, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, let us look at how it is that we identify the um, repetitions and how we eliminate them. In this paragraph, the writer is presenting a point of view. Strikes are mainly caused by writers' demands for higher wages. And we have the extract here, so we're going to look at the um, repetition that we see in the extract, and they're underlined. In modern times, we hear a good deal about industrial strife and labor unrest. We hear of strikes and shutdowns in industries because of this dissatisfaction among employees. Many employees seem dissatisfied and are ready to strike at all costs. The causes of the unrest vary, but in the majority of industrial disputes, the root of the problem appears to be money. The workers want higher wages for their labor. They believe that the employers are exploiting them and therefore they strike for higher they strike for higher wages for their labor. Now, if we look at the extract here, we will realize the ideas that are repeated are underlined. Now, when we are writing our summaries, we don't need to include these, right? So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be taking out these examples of repetition. All right. Now, what we want to understand, right, is that we don't need to include repetition, right, in our summaries. We don't need to include statistical data, and we don't need to include examples. All of this we need to um, eliminate in order to make our summaries easier to understand. Now, the aim to see if we understand or if you understand is to do what? Practice, right? Because practice makes perfect. Now, everything that we have learned so far, what is main idea, how to find the main idea, what is the difference between a topic and the main idea, how to combine the main idea, and what do we use to combine the main idea, all of these tips, all of these that we have learned so far, we're going to be using them to write a summary in its entirety, right? Because that is the aim. After going through all of this, the aim is to be perfect at writing our summaries because that is what we want. All right, so we need to ensure that we read the, the, the instructions carefully, right? So remember, read your instructions carefully. 
Read the following text on tattoos and list five main points discussed. Then summarize the text using your own words to express your answer. Do not exceed 120 words. Now, what do you notice about this one this time around, right? We are given, or you are given, a word limit, right? And the word limit here is 120 words. And you must be saying to yourself, how is it that I can, can I possibly summarize all of this information using 120 words? It is possible, and we're going to be looking at it. All right, so the title of this extract is Tattoos. Since the beginning of civilization, they have served as marks of identification, spiritual protection, and decoration. Now, at the cusp of another millennium, tattoos and other varieties of body markings are resurfacing as a popular form of individual self-expression. Tattoos are timeless and can be as unique as the bearers they adorn. They don't fade away like favorite t-shirts or get lost or broken like school rings. They stay with you forever until death. They become a part of you from the day you sit in the artist's chair, etching your emotions alongside the needles, alongside the needles sting, transforming an instant of your life into a symbol for the world to see. Tattoos and other body markings arrived in the Caribbean with African slaves and indentured workers from China and India. They were sometimes the only permanent keepsakes of peoples snatched from their ancestral places. The Caribbean's original Amerindian inhabitants also used tattoos to mark spiritual milestones. The China of the Northern Caribbean Islands, for instance, used vegetable dyes to affix images of their guardians onto their skin. These images also indicated an individual's lineage or his or her social position. Each tattoo was both a personal history book and a mark of belonging. Over the centuries, however, tattoos and other forms of bodily adornment have mutated, exchanging religious and cultural significance for the individualist associations. Sometimes that mark of individuality has been confused with rebellion and nonconformity, often alluding to a stain of bad character. Tattoo wearers have seemed wild, dangerous, even just plain bad. But today, tattoos have come full circle. Celebrities, writers, lawyers, housewives, all proudly display their marks of rebellion. An entirely new perception of the art of tattooing has arisen, which is more than just a preoccupation with style. This rediscovered form of expression has spawned an entire subculture of individuals among us. They carry this common bond of distinction through their daily routines via the images on their forearms, shoulders, ankles, or torsos. They connect to each other, announcing to the world that it is okay to be unique and different, right? Now, all of what we learned, we are going to practice it. We're going to be looking at it. So here are the main ideas, right? So there were five paragraphs. So hence, there are five main ideas here. Number one, tattoos are permanent markings which have been around from the beginning of civilization. They were brought to the Caribbean from Africa, China, and India, but the Amerindians wore them even before. They were used by people in the Caribbean for religious, ethnic, and cultural purposes. Over the years, they came to be personal expressions identified with rebellion and defiance. Attitudes have changed towards tattoos, and today they have become acceptable as marks of uniqueness and difference. Now, what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be doing this at home, and then we come back to see how well you did. That's all the time we have. We've been discussing summary writing. You keep safe, wash your hands regularly, sanitize, and wear your masks.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.